What? Blood has a moving train level? He's just gonna be- I just have to ride a train that's murdering people? What? Hi! Uh, welcome back to Blood. I was about to quit and then I saw the next level was a moving train level. With 1997 graphics. And I'm just like, mesmerized. <laughs> this is like, pre-Deus Ex. It had to run on such old machines. So as you can see, you know, I mean, they it's not like they could put a bunch of like, you know, buildings and trees whizzing by and stuff like that. That would have been way too much. So we're just, we're just riding a train. And I guess probably falling off is probably bad, right? Oh, so am I, for a second I thought, the train was just gonna go somewhere, maybe. But no. No. The train is the level. The train's the level! I love it! Okay, is everyone dead now? Everyone dead? We all dead? Okay, I think we've all agreed that we're dead. I'm kind of doing weirdly okay, so let's save the game. It is now 2006. Uh, Get off my train. What the? Where'd you come from? Locked. All right, I'm not doing that great. Locked. Is everything locked? Locked. Yes. Okay. So this so there's no reload button. It's weirding me out. Ah, what the? No, get, get out of there. Pfft, I hit the tilde key by accident. You can turn the lights on. It's so weird they put light switches in here. Okay, that could have gone better. Save, crawl. All right, I think... I didn't realize that door was going to close behind me. I think I just did worse. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, so first I'm going to deal with this guy. <laughs> Before I deal with anybody else. I don't know if it would hurt me to stand on that fire. I'm going to wait a second. Let it go away. That probably didn't do anything at all. Eh, I guess I feel okay about that. Could have been better, but whatever. We'll save it as remaining in 2006. I need a key. Okay, so it's locked means it's locked forever. But I need a key means, need a key. means there's a key to be found. Okay, I'm going to save again right here. Because that's how save crawling works. You want to minimize the amount of time that you spend. What do you bet that there's something I would get out of, like, flipping every single light switch? Okay, that could have gone... Better, but it also could have gone a lot worse. Oh, crap. You know what? Just from the amount of ammo I wasted on that guy, we're going back. And you know what we're doing? We're just throwing freaking bombs everywhere. Just preemptively getting rid of some dudes. I love that zombies in this game say brains because like modern modern zombie fiction didn't exist yet. You know, the like a lot of uh, like you know zombie stories and zombie movies and stuff have been around for decades. 
But there's a certain modern take on zombies that came with like sort of the modern Dawn of the Dead and the modern, you know, the Walking Dead comics and stuff like that that is fundamentally different in a lot of ways from older zombie stories. And this whole like brains thing is from the older one. And so it's interesting seeing this game from 1997 having the, the zombies say brains. Whereas, like, modern zombies, you know, like it's like plants versus zombies that has zombies talking about brains. But, like, the serious ones, zombies don't say anything at all. Because we treat them like they're, like, humans who have lost the ability to think. You know, it's like, they're not, they're not something like, we think of them as being something almost, like, natural and deadly, like a disease. We don't think of zombies as being something occult and creepy and possessed the way people used to. And that sort of the brains zombie is more from the, you know, zombies are occult and creepy, not zombies are, you know, dead humans or, 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 or humans that have succumbed to a disease. Oh, oh, wait, what? Okay, let's try this again. I got, wait, reflective shots? What does that even mean? I don't know, but I'm going to save with it on. It's now 2007. Yeah, Enigma says that, yeah, these, these are clearly Romero zombies. And super armor. Okay, now I'm at the freaking back. And I don't have a key. Okay, I got this reflective armor thing that is timed at the end of a battle with no enemies to use it on. Like, what? What the heck? Like, so a, a timed benefit is something you want to get... Whoa! Guns akimbo. Save. I'm actually surprised that akimbo was a term that they used back then. Um, what else is hiding around in here? So if I had a key, it would show up to the right of my um, ammo display. So I don't have one. Or do... Wait, I do? What? I was it. I never tried to. I never tried to open that before. I just realized because the previous two doors had had the same skull next to them and said, I'm locked, you can't open me. I just assumed. Oh, wait, that's me. That's a reflection. This is what I look like? What? Okay. Um, okay, I had guns akimbo. Where do I... Where do I get those back? I want that again. Is that not a thing I can do? Can I not have it back? How did I... How did I get that? I mean, I've picked up guns akimbo. I assumed that I could have it again is it just a was it a temporary thing yeah so anyway i think the problem with with timed benefits is the fact you have to get them early in an encounter they can't be the prize for like after you've cleared the enemies from a room and you have time to sit and think and figure out what you're gonna do you know and you get through a secret you that's not when you want to get a timed benefit because then you don't even know when your next combat encounter is you want like Gosh. You want that timed benefit to show up. At the beginning of a battle. Remember how many levels in Doom started with you picking up a very, very powerful, uh, cool item. And then immediately an encounter would start after you got the item and then you got to play with the item in the encounter and those could be timed this is the toilet isn't it um 
And those could be timed because, you know, you knew that you were going to get it right before the encounter, and that would be satisfying. But yeah, getting one as a secret at the end of an encounter just doesn't make any sense. Okay, so yeah, Safi Magi says that uh, Guns Akimbo is a power-up. So it's not... Okay, and that... Okay, that one opens like that. And that one opens there. So yeah, so apparently it was timed. So they say that I shouldn't use guns against rats. Oh, great. I just sat on a... It's so easy to accidentally sit on that. Oh, Leftovers. gosh. Leftovers? Okay. Um... So I understand that like it might seem wasteful because they have so such low hit points, but I have trouble hitting them with my fork. And if I miss them with my fork, they're already close enough to do serious damage to me. Um, and so, or at least somewhat damage me. Um, so, so that's why I'm sort of, uh, why I kind of want to use my bullets. On. I've got 88 shotgun shells left, right? So it doesn't feel like a big deal to waste ammo at this stage. Early on, when I had, like, almost no bullets and I was actually just restricted to my fork, totally, I wouldn't use bullets on a rat. But I think using a shotgun shell on a rat at this stage, when I've got a lot of them, and I can avoid damage that way, feel, feels good to me. I'm also playing at a lower difficulty level, too. It could easily be that Safi here, who, who clearly knows something about the game, usually plays at a higher difficulty level where... It matters a lot more to conserve your ammo. Uh, and in that case, yeah, I totally agree that... You know, at that point, you should probably be better at shooting than I am. Better at aiming. And it might actually... Oh, oh, there's a switch I didn't notice. Was oh, this the same switch? It's the same switch, isn't it? Oh, interesting. Yeah, it is the same switch on both sides. Huh. <laughs> Enigma says that... Uh, if you, if you miss a rat with a shotgun, you don't deserve shells. <laughs> um, okay. So this thing, it's got a lock on it. Oh, what? Beast vision? The heck is beast vision? Probably something that's useful if you're in the middle of an encounter. Okay, so the problem is now, I got into the locked door that I was worried about. And I got another, and I got a key, but I think it was just a key to unlock these doors. I feel like I've opened every door in here. I could be wrong about that. Okay, Safi says that those are basically like the light amplification goggles in Doom. Gotcha. Okay, I'm not seeing an effect immediately, but I also, there's a way to like, I don't know how to cycle through the items. I can cycle through the weapons by scrolling the mouse wheel. By the way, mirror technology was probably a big deal back then. So we should just like, you know, this is like making a portal in Portal or something like that. Like it's, it, it, I think it's fancy. So I just wanted to highlight that. Oh, what's this? Uh, okay, I thought that maybe that would be a way out, but it is not. Um, and this is a room I've already been in. And this is probably just another window outside. I'm just trying to think, where where have I not gone yet? And this is just where I... This is just a dumbwaiter that I came through before. So yeah, so this... I got a key to this from inside this. Was there another door that was locked earlier? I ah, okay. Okay, so... These ones, when I tried to open them... Oh, he's, he's getting down. When I tried to open them originally, it said... These, this, this door is locked. But when I open the other ones, it says, I need a key. And the, the fact that it used different different lines made me think that they worked in different ways. And that getting the key... Whoa. For one of them, wouldn't open the other. But I was wrong. Um, okay. I've made a hole. That's neat. Uh, I thought that maybe this would lead to some progress, though. I'm not sure what my, By the way, I'm not sure what my objective is. Is it just...
come on, ride a train? Locked. This one's still locked. locked. Okay. I think my objective might just be come on, ride a train. Come ride it. Come on, ride a train. Oh, get away. I mean, it's appropriate for the for like the late nineties for my objective to be to come on, ride a train. Yeah, see? Watch me get beat by this rat. Okay, there we go. Rat of Cord says that this... Oh! Wait, how did I just... What did I just do? How did I... Oh, R! R cycles between my items. That was just complete accident. Oh, oh wait, what is this? Oh! Oh, there's a crawl space. I am amazed that they required me to find this. Progress requ- Wait, like, I'm assuming this is progress. Okay, I've got 80 bullets of these. Okay. Is this pro- Is this a secret or is this progress? No. Stop. There we go. Okay, I think this is just- This is just a secret. Okay, so Cog says that what I'm trying to do is find the key to the boiler so that I can blow up the train. Oh, you know what? I came this way originally. Did I come from up there? I, I didn't know this room existed. I didn't know this was my... Dang it! Okay, I had not saved. But, I've got the ability to heal myself. Having healed, I will save now. It is now 2008. That's fun. So yeah, so I didn't even know that this location existed. I must stop this train. So it would have been very difficult for me to um, decide to go here. All right, so safety clamps disabled. Uh oh, internal engine heat rising. Oh no! End of the line. I assume it's okay to be in here. I bet this is a good idea. And everyone's squealing and screaming. Oh, no. Hey, I got half the secrets and killed all but two. Where are the two characters I missed? I felt like I killed everybody. Okay, so Safi Maggi is pointing out that one of the things that was really cool about this engine, not only the fact that it could do mirrors, but the fact that that little crawl space room, as much as I felt a little bit betrayed... <laughs> By the fact that, uh, that that was not an easy room to see. And definitely thinking of it as being like, you know, I guess because it didn't actually, that wasn't, that wasn't necessary for progress. So it's actually, it's okay. That it was a secret. It was fine. But, uh, you know, but the thing that was cool about it was it was a room on top of another room, which Doom could not do. Doom's technology, basically, I, I, as I understand it, the reason that Doom was able to be so... It feels so advanced and still be so performant was because its maps were actually very simple. Um, and under the hood, the maps were actually all 2D floor maps. Um, you could not have a bridge over a tunnel in Doom because the 2D floor map just said, there is one floor the player can walk on. And it's, it can be higher and it can be lower, but there's only one of it. You can't have a floor on top of a floor. And so I remember when I played Dark Forces, that was another one from, from this era, I was really impressed that they had floors on top of floors, because that was a thing that Doom could not do. And it's not like, you know, I think theoretically Doom could have done it if they had more powerful machines to run on. I think I think, the, I think it was basically, you know, one thing that J John Carmack was very good was sort of eking a lot of performance out of, like, those older school machines from back in the day. And, uh, like, I think one of the first... Wow. 
This promises to be fun. One of the first id projects, I'm going to save my game real quick. Uh, one of the first id projects was a game called Commander Keen. That was, uh, it was just a side scroller with very primitive graphics, but the thing that was cool about it was that it ran at 60 frames a second on really ancient hardware. And they basically just found ways. This is going badly. Let's try this again. They found ways to basically to do some like, you know, basic old school computery stuff to make a game much more performant than you would expect it to be. And so, you know, when they made, you know, Wolfenstein and Doom, a lot of that again was about, whoa, where, pff, was about getting, you know, computers of that era to do things they had never been able to do before by figuring out ways to make those things unusually performant. So I'm, I'm just assuming, I don't know this for sure, because I, I was a kid back then. I didn't work in games or anything. But I'm assuming that that Doom's limitations were probably in order to make the game more performant. To make, to make it able to do surprising things on that ancient hardware. Okay. Okay, so there's a key in there. I don't know how to get in there, but there's a key in there. Are you... It's a freaking mime! I hate mimes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just... There's no way that was going to be a good guy. Um, all right, so... Okay, that guy's weird. All right, let me... Is he saying trick or treat? Okay, I just wanted to do that just in case there was a way into that little room with the key, but it looks like not. Is this supposed to be a carnival? This is supposed to be a carnival, isn't it? I don't like carnivals in video games. Just because, like, when you're doing a carnival in, like, a horror game or something, you're always like, oh, the irony, it's something that's supposed to be fun, but it's actually creepy and scary. And I'm like, the first time I saw that trope, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's pretty clever. And then another, the next 19 times... Oh, are you, am I trying to get this in the mouth? Then the next, you know, 900 times that I saw that trope, it was less interesting. Oh, I definitely want to get this guy in there. What? Oh, no! Come on! I totally got him in there. Disappointed. All right. Um, hmm. Okay, somebody's saying step right up and I don't like them. I need a key. I need a key. Oh, gosh. Yeah, these guys just, they fire instantaneously. Okay. I appreciate the fact that I can kill a guy from the distance with a shotgun. There's a lot of games where you can't. Uh, I'm going to heal and then save. And 2009 is still good. We'll do that. So, uh, J. Louis says uh, that, that that carnival idea... Does it, he says that it works in the original Silent Hill, but then by Silent Hill 3, it's just like I described. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, so yeah, it's like it's the kind of thing where it's like, if it's a surprise and it's interesting, you can make it work, but it's become such a trope now. Okay, I can't open this. No exit. It's become such a trope now that I... Boots of jumping? Okay. Like, is there a reason to use the boots of jumping? Hold on. Also, my phone's buzzing. Let me make sure there's nothing weird going on. Ah, okay. I'll need to answer that in just a second. But for right now, okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to see 
Let's use the boots of jump. No. Uh, let's middle mouse. Boing. Okay, there is nothing useful in here. Okay. What else might there be? Boing. Okay. Okay, this is the ceiling of the level. Okay, I'm just not engaging right now. I'm just like trying to figure out what, what were the boots of jumping for? I'll explore this all for real later. Okay, no, this isn't interesting. Okay, yeah, I don't know what the boots of jumping were for, but... So I'm pretty sure all that stuff I just did is stuff I could have done without the boots of jumping. So I'm going to go figure out what did I just do? Okay, I didn't go up that ramp. I went this way. What? Oh, it's that guy. Paddock insects. Also, hating mimes is also kind of a weird trope, though I guess this game is old enough that might have felt novel at the time, so I'm not going to give him crap for hating mimes. Um, yeah, being creeped out by mimes, though, definitely feels a little old school. Okay, who is saying step right up? I, I just... That's going to bother me. All right. Seeing is believing... I'm actually kind of impressed that they got, like, text to just show up in random places. Because that could be pretty expensive, like, texture memory-wise. I wonder if they actually ba basically made a single font texture and then parceled it out to make this text. Okay, kicking the heads around like soccer balls. Not gonna lie. Kind of funny. I shouldn't be wasting my shotgun shells on this, but they're a lot more generous with them these days than they used to be. Take that thing. All right. The idiot circus boy. Am I going to have to fight some kind of monster clown after this? Okay, I really should be more... Oh, crap. Oh, by the way, this is... Okay, I'm looking away for a second. Uh, this is before the era of awareness of um, epileptic... Uh, effects on epileptic people of flashing lights. So, um, if you're at any risk of that, stop watching this stream right now. <laughs> because this looks like it's pretty bad. Uh, might have to put a warning or something. This is like, worst case scenario, it looks like. Sheesh. Is there a... Is there a button to make that stop? Nope. There's a button for making a platform come up. Okay, I don't know what just... Okay. Oh, it's for... Oh, I can be a high wire act, can I? Okay. Let's save. 2010! Whoa. Okay, so I can make that come back if I want to, but I can high wire across. Ta-da. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> All right. That was kind of fun. All right. Send me down. So I'm betting falling in that would have been bad. Got some life essence. Let's save the game again. 2010. Okay. Uh, so Safi says, fun fact regarding this room. Uh, behind the snake pit, behind the wall somewhere, you can find a reference to another build engine protagonist, Duke Nukem, mangled and dead. Really? Like, he says, so somewhere back behind this wall. So is it the kind of thing I have to, like, cheat or find a really weird secret in order to get to? That would be fun. So, so... Okay, yeah, so this was apparently, I think uh, Safi has suggested this a couple of different times. 
Oh, hey, this might be what the boots are jumping her for. Um, Safi has suggested that this is a build engine game, which makes sense. Duke Nukem, again, was also famous for having things like mirrors, which this game can handle. What? Okay, there's clearly something up there. So, I don't know if this is a smart move. 2011. But I'm going to try to jump up here. Now, can I... Yes, I can stop using the boots. Oh, what the heck? Oh. What? Well, that's why you save before you do garbage like that. Okay, so apparently I could have gone in here. Shotgun shells. Come up here, and that's just as good. All right, fine. So I guess what the boots are jumping are really for is to just help me find things that I can actually get to in another way. <laughs> and then I can discover that way and then reload. So I should just save before I use the boots of jumping every time. This says Happy Go Pukey. Definitely saving before I go to a place called Happy Go Pukey. Oh, wait. Safi just suggested I might have to shoot the wall to make the Duke Nukemi thing happen. Okay. I I'm willing to try it. Let's try that. Nope. Nope. Hmm. Uh, there could be all kinds of things. Let's go to Happy Go Pukey. We'll find out what this is. I need a key. I need the eyeball key. Okay, eyeball key. Uh, punch a meter. Yay! I'm successful. This is the storage. Locked. 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 I, I, I feel like everybody... Ah, that's the dagger door. That's the key I just got. Okay, so this is a new place. Saving. Nope. Screw you! It's got a switch in it. Is that all we've got? Is a switch? Ah, eyeball key. There we are. I don't know what I just did with that switch. Ah! A swinging door. Is that it? You done coming after me? Oh gosh! Whoever's saying step right up is getting a bullet in the face. <laughs> as soon as I can manage it. 2012. Alright. We're basically catching up to the future here. 2012 is the year before I started working on Dead Labs. Oh gosh! So we started in my teenage years. Right after high school. By the time I'm done playing this game, we'll probably be in the present. What's up there? Napalm launcher? What? Okay, well that's useless. Um... Right. So you'll notice, by the way, that they followed, like, even though the guns are a little different from Doom, like, one is your melee attack, two is your pistol, three is your shotgun, uh, four is your machine gun, five is your rocket launcher. Like, these are all named differently, and some of them work a little bit differently from the Doom versions, but they basically adhered to what players of Doom would have expected. It's funny because Doom was four years old at the time this game came out. But that's sort of like, it's kind of like how, you know, modern games, like modern shooters, if they know what's good for them, uh, will usually have a control scheme that's very similar to Call of Duty's control scheme. Um, and that's because that's what people are used to playing. And so enough, like, not only does Call of Duty do it, and it is a popular game itself, but enough other games imitate Call of Duty that, it, it, that, that Call of Duty's controls have become 
a veritable standard. Is it? I feel like ah, there's something else in here. Okay. And so even though it was a four-year-old game, they still, like, down to, like, the content. Like, this isn't just, like, how the controls work. It's, like, what weapon each control gives you. What the heck? A fugitive reference? A fugitive reference. Really? And it's not even, like, meaningful. It's just, hey, remember... Remember the fugitive? <laughs> it's like, that's all this is say. It's like, hey, hey guys, you, you know that movie? You know that movie? That movie. <laughs> like, okay. Sure, man. Whatever. Um. All right, so I don't... That, is, is that all this was for? It's just so that I could see a fugitive reference? <laughs> Oh, that guy! Okay, so, like, I don't... I've lost track of what I'm trying to accomplish right now. I've opened all of the doors that I knew needed to be opened. That I couldn't open before. I'm gonna save. But, like... Okay. Locked. It's still locked. Okay, so there's still a key I'm missing. I already opened th I already opened this. I already went in here. Got the key that was in here. That was the eyeball key. Right? And then I got weirded out by the door. Remember the door problem? Opening a door like that. It's how it works in real life, but when you try to open it from here, it causes problems. Figuring out how doors work in a video game is kinda hard. Okay, and then that when I got that key. That opened the storage door automatically. That's right. And I came in here, and I did all the stuff I did in here, but I haven't actually opened the eyeball door, right? There was an eyeball door somewhere. Ah, yes, that's what I was missing. I had not actually gone to Happy Go Pukey. All right, got it. Oh, so Cogs points out... Wait, a wrecked tri so, did the Fugitive have a wrecked train on it? So, Cogs is saying that the Fugitive is about someone who escaped, who, like, uh, a Fugitive who specifically escaped on a wrecked train. Wasn't it a bus in the movie? Because, yeah, if it had something to do with a wrecked train, that would make sense as a reference in that spot because it was a wrecked train. But I, I had it in my head that in the movie I saw that it was a, it was a bus. Like a prison bus that he escaped from. Lock, lock. Oh, what? No. Oh. Back we go. Okay. So, I killed that guy. This opened up. Oh, gosh. And there's an exit. Okay, I've been here before, but maybe there's something else that's special? I don't know. Reddit's cord that says, like, the bus crashes in front of a train or something. Right, maybe so. Maybe so. Wait, so did I get... Oh, gosh. Um. Did I get anything out of that? Where did I just come out? I'm sorry, I just lost track of everything. Um. Okay, yeah, so I can't... Dang it. Dang it, where was I? I was over here. I came through here. I fought the one gargoyle that came off the merry-go-round. This exit door was open, but... This was here. But this just leads to places I've been before, right? Yes, this just leads to the dagger door. And I can't go backwards. Locked. So, what did I... What am I missing? 
Because both this door and the other door seem to lead back to places I've been before. I mean, this is a fun ride. Also, a rotating platform, something that Doom couldn't do. Um, and this is just, again, another place I've already been. Oh! I got a moon key off him, and it's pointing me at the moon door. That's what was going on there. Okay. 2013, the year I got my job at Undead Labs. All right, somebody blew up the bridge. They don't want me going this way. It's going to save again, because that's what this system insists on me doing. What happens if I go in the water? I can swim? And there's... Do I have... Do I have breath? Is this a thing I should worry about? Could I have done this in the first area with the bridge? Oh, nope. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Oh, gosh. Are there any, like, Sonic the Hedgehog bubbles? Okay. Okay. I'm here now. That definitely could have gone better. Okay, is there a way for me to get out? There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna save that as 2014. That is the year the technical difficulties started making citation needed. Look it up on YouTube. Oh, we're at the end of the level. One out of 12 secrets! <laughs> uh, uh. Alright. Alright. The reason I even made this episode was because the next level, after the one, at the, like, at the end of episode one, the next level was a moving train. I was like, I can't resist this. And then there was a circus. Uh, let's see what the next level is, but we're probably done right now. Burning crosses! Okay, I can yeah, I, I can deal with you know missing out on some burning crosses. So that was another episode of Blood. Weirdly, as much as I like, especially initially, was like, what's up with this ancient game? It's so weird, and and, I, and it just doesn't like work with my modern sensibilities at all. You know what? I uh, got used to the way it works, and I've been having fun. So I want to take a break from it right now, but I might seriously come back to this later on. <laughs> So, um, there's a subscribe button, and if I do come back to blood, I will stick the episode right there. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see. And, I don't know, go play, go look at Cultic. I'll stick Cultic right there.